Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome to another Thursday night of a thrifty business. I'm your one host, Vegas J. And first, I want to say that was new uh, theme song music. And if you've been to uh, the Secret Beach Bash, you'll know this band. It's the new surf album from Franks and Dean. So uh, starting from today and going forward, any music you hear on anything I make will be uh, Franks and Dean's new kick-ass surf album. So uh, there is there is not a moment, a link to the bottom, but there will be. The album comes out next month. Awesome. They are awesome. But I am not alone. I have a full house today. Hiding behind the uh, cloud is Stacy. <laughs> And I have one co-host. Hello. Her there. There's Steph. Hello. Hi, Steph. What's happening? It's good to be here. As you can tell, Steph's here live in the studio. And I have another co-host live in the studio. Hi. This is Debbie Weeder, and I've always wanted to say it. And this is Thrifty Business. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like that, Deb. I mean, that's uh, getting a little crazy there. <laughs> and this is Thrifty Business. I like it. All right. Let's get ready to our first segment, and then we'll introduce our guest. I'm Ryan Seacrest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink a different rum out of a different tiki mug, and I try and match it up to our guest. Our guest tonight is Brandon Grove. Hi, Brandon. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I am good. All right, so tonight, when we chat with you, we're talking about military items collecting selling and i thought what better and actually who thought this who came up with this one? Oh, steph. oh steph, sorry, steph uh yeah so it's one of the newer tiki mugs i own it's a cannonball <laughs> so well, Civil War kind of yeah you know you know granted we're not using cannonballs anymore but there was some point in wars where they were using cannonballs and since we're talking military we decided to drink uh navy tradition cruzon rum so Yes, that's what we're all drinking. So, it's really good. so cheers. <laughs> Apparently, everyone likes it. I see a lot of uh, uh, cheers going on over there. <laughs> and Brandon, do you have a tiki mug by any chance? I don't have a tiki mug. I just brought a German military theme. That's, that's perfect. I love it. <laughs> all right, sit back, relax, enjoy the show, and we'll see you in about half an hour. All right. Uh, eh, 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 eh. All right, cool. Here we go. Here we go. Really? Time for our scores of the week. These are bolos, things you should be on the lookout for. These are some of the good stuff that Debbie, Steph, and I have sold in the last week or so. And I think uh, Steph's up first. Yeah. Okay. To Just because I want to be totally honest here, my store's been on vacation for almost three months. So my sales have been very, very slow. But they do trickle in every once in a while. I have a five-day handling time on, and people still buy things. This hat was, I bought, I buy a lot of hats from either OfferUp or I get a lot of lots on online auctions. And this hat came with a big group. I think there were 58 hats, and I paid $18. Nice. And this is the last one. So that's why it's a score, because there was many of them, and they they just, I love selling it's hats. Just great at this point. It is. Yeah. And they're so easy to ship and easy to list. They're just, they really are about my favorite thing to sell. Nice. This one went to New York. What? This one, I owe. Speaking of the Navy. It's yeah. very appropriate for the Navy. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> but I, I owe this sale to, to Debbie because she has taught me to look wow. for military books, especially oversized ones. So I don't usually go through the whole book section, but. This one stuck out. Actually, Eric found this one, but just about a second before I spotted it, he spotted it. We bought it for $349. It's a really cool book. I kind of wanted to keep it on my coffee table. It's all about the Naval Air Base that has closed now in San Diego. And it's like Top Gun. It's the Top Gun, what the movie was based off of. And it's, it's, it was a very cool book. I accepted a best offer for it for $89.99 plus, nice. plus shipping. Nice. All right, Deb, you're up. Okay, The Great Gatsby. I actually got this book for free. Um, well, that's the best. <laughs> yeah, and we accepted a best offer of $249. It was listed for quite a while, and it's new sealed, and it came in a slipcover. 
So we were very happy to have to finally sell that. And for 240 bucks, we were happy with that. Hell yeah, I'd be happy. Yep. Um, this is a duvet oh. that we got in Lake Tahoe about less than a year ago. We had it um, for sale and paid six bucks for it. And the fun thing about this, besides the price it sold for, is that it was listed maybe 10 months, let's just say. And we came back from a trip, another trip to Lake Tahoe. And as soon as we came home, it sold. So we bought it in Lake Tahoe and then we sold it after we made another trip to Lake Tahoe. So that was kind of fun. Nice. <laughs> and I forgot to uh, introduce one person. Let me switch me back on screen here. Because my friend Cheryl is sitting here on her, her last night. Where are we? Hi, Cheryl. There we go. Her last night in Vegas. And this Aww. is where she wanted to just spend it. Yeah, hanging out, <laughs> hanging out behind the scenes of Thrifty Business. <laughs> All right, now it's my turn for my scores. Uh, look how pretty this is. Sue Ann of Dallas. Now, Sue Ann of Dallas is a vintage brand. It doesn't normally sell hugely, but this one was so bright and vibrant. And it was funny. I had a, a funny back and forth with a buyer. They have a vintage store in California. And she's like, well, I, get, I can only go this high because it's my budget. I'm a reseller. I go, well, so am I. And to pay my bills, I can only go this low. And we found the meeting part. So... Uh, and I picked that up. Uh, that might have been uh, at the dollar sale at Buffalo Exchange. No. No? All right. Well, it was only a couple bucks, whatever it was. Uh, Stacy found this at a garage sale for $1. Oh, and yeah. the cool thing is I sold this one for 50 And she asked if I had two. We had two of the same. She asked if she could buy the second one in a week for her mother-in-law. I said, sure. So I just pulled it. I said, when you're ready, just let me know and I'll pop it back up there for you. A little tidbit. The only reason I even bought those was because... Of your co-host, Stephanie. Ta-da! All right, so uh, <laughs> this is one of the cooler shirts I bought recently. Joe Namath brand, and it's all clipper ships. I mean, you know, because when you think of Joe Namath, you think of clipper ships. So, uh, and I got to—I really got to give a shout out to my assistant. I love what she did with like the the arms taking the shirt off. That's that's, awesome. that's kind of a cool little picture there. Uh, you know, it's not a needed picture, but it's such a fun picture that people remember it. And then there's the Joe Namath for Arrow. She's really up in the game for us. Yeah. And then this is my big one of the week. Uh, LA Kings jersey that I bought at where? My favorite store, Buffalo Exchange, for $17. And we sold for $190 because it was a vintage 1990s. Can I ask which Buffalo Exchange? I, for where in the world I forget. Are you? But I like this, too. She's like, yeah, rock on. Yeah, she's really putting the arms to use. Can I send my stuff to her? And yeah, it's, 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 it, it's pretty awesome. But yeah, keep your eyes peeled for uh, vintage um, uh, hockey jerseys. Yeah. All right, so we've done my regular scores. Now it's time for the CD scores of the week. These are all the best CDs I sold this week. And I've been recently throwing in a cassette because coming very soon to a computer near you is my cassette webinar. I've been selling a ton of cassettes. This one I paid $3 for and I sold for $35 and shipping to Canada. So I know you all love the band Cancer, their album Death Shall Rise. Uh, but uh, I'll be teaching you all about cassettes because there is some similarity to CDs. But there's a lot more not. What would be the opposite of similarities? Nothing. Dissimilarities, I guess. Huh? Dissimilarities. <laughs> All right, so when I originally released my CD webinar and we ran some ads on Facebook, and all these people said, there's no money to be made in CDs. Okay, I paid a dollar for this CD, and it sold the uh, soundtrack to How the West Was Won, sold for $60. Uh, and I sold, in the same week, I sold Conan the Destroyer for 30 which I paid 5 for, and Conan the Barbarian for 25 which I paid 3 for. So, uh, yeah, it was a, a good week for uh, Conan. Now, if you've not taken my CD webinar, head on over to FlippingCDs.com. I know it's 2019. I know you can stream anything. You can download anything. You can rip anything. But people, as you can see, still love spending money on CDs. I just showed you a $35 cassette, $60 CD, $30 CD, $35 CD. If you're in the thrifting board, you saw my $70 uh, bachelor party CD. So the media this week, mainly CDs, has been off the hook. So I can teach you how to Conquer a record store and conquer a thrift store because there's different ways to uh, conquer both. And they're so easy to store. But I give away one every episode. So get ready in the chat. If you have not seen the webinar and you're not in the secret beach, because if you're in the secret beach, you can watch it whenever you want. 
please participate. If you're in the secret beach and if you're already seeing it, please don't because let's give it, let somebody win who has never seen the webinar. Differences, thank you, Rags. All right, this famous rocker owns two tiki bars. So see, I put everything together. I put the tiki with the rock together. What? I, did, I heard you guys talking yeah. about earlier. Today. All right, so here's the name of the bar. So you either know or we'll see who the fastest Googler is. <laughs> <laughs> so who owns this bar? Nope, it is not Sammy Hagar. He owns Cabo Wobble, and those are not tiki bars. He does, he does tequila. Who owns Tiki and Niki? This is the Kauai one. There you go. Boom. Lisa, rock and roll angel. She better know what that name. <laughs> yeah. And she is correct. Todd Rungeren, and that there's a picture of him at the bar, and that's his wife with the blue hair. They, they own Tiki and Niki. So, Lisa. Do me a favor, hit me up on Facebook, drop me a message, and I will get your free webinar sent off to you. <laughs> Popeye's postcard said the lead singer of cancer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for the rest of you who haven't seen it yet, flippincds.com, when you check out, there is a code to get half off. Uh, look, you find one good CD, you find how the West was won, and boom, it's paid for your webinar. And then the rest is just gravy. It is two and a half hours of content that'll just blow your mind. CDs are everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. I had to fix my little graphic there. Okay. Not everything's a winner, sadly. <laughs> that is a big tiggy mug to hold. I got to tell you right now. Uh, these are our duds of the week. Things that didn't go so well for us. Do not let our mistakes be yours. I love picking up these studio projects. I years ago I sold one on Christmas Day for fifty bucks, but these the, the ones I have now seem to be setting. It has six hundred and fifty views and no watchers, so I'm gonna have to lower my price I think to get this one to go. Look at those lips. Who wouldn't want that hanging on their wall? <laughs> it's your Mick Jagger ink and <laughs> mask. All right, so now it's time for Steph's dud. Oh, and it is a dud. I, this was one of the first things I bought when I first started selling, and I was so excited for it. It's NASCAR. It's number 24. It's Jeff Gordon. It's going to sell great. Craft things do wonderful. Yes. Almost a year and a half, two years later, it's still sitting there. I paid $5 for it. I can't even give it away practically. I think it's going to end up in a yard sale here no. very soon. Somebody watching the show is going to want it. <laughs> yeah, it. When I teach classes, I tell people, like, oh, look, NASCAR might be the most popular sport in the world on the first time for the secondary market. No. No, it's horrible. It was, I haven't even had any offers or anything. I mean, I've had signed driver stuff, like drivers everyone loves, like signed jackets. No one cares. It's so weird. Speaking of no one cares, usually when you find something with the uh, Twin Towers on it, they usually can sell pretty well. I have this mug forever and someone finally offered me 10 bucks plus shipping and i was happy to see it go because i probably had it up for almost two years and uh you know maybe just no one care about that coffee mug but usually twin tower stuff sells pretty well and this one i've had for sale forever i thought these parrots were adorable and then i thought are they not parrots do i have the wrong bird in the title are they macaw? i don't know so if you're watching and you're a bird is person a is this a parrot so here's yeah. the back. And they're usually like red and blue. Yeah. And these are vintage and it says uh, made in England, I think. Oh, Brazil, Brazil. But I thought, oh, these would be cute in someone's like tropical bar and uh, parakeet. Parakeet. Oh. Oh. No. Oh. No, parakeet. 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 Oh. Parakeet. Is that beat though, a parakeet? Yeah, I don't think so. If I mean, I could. still alive, I'd buy them for her. But uh, I thought they were cute. I got them on sale for 30 bucks. Like Look, if you see them and you like this, offer me $20, I'll happily yeah. accept it right now. Let's do this. Let's get this all. Yes, they need their forever home. Yes. All right. Now it's time for. Where in the world did our stuff go? If you are not shipping internationally, you are leaving out 7.3 billion with a B potential customers. And yay, we all have sales internationally this week. So, Steph is first. <laughs> Mine, it was that, that Fighter Town USA Navy book. Someone in France had to have it. And Jason said, I had to try to pronounce this. I don't have a clue. The best I could do is it's in France and it's Midi Pyrenees, Ooh, maybe. Good job. I like it. Someone yeah. can correct me, please. That's the fun of the segment. You have to pronounce but, this city. Like so it. that was the, one of the best things about this book is I had free shipping on it, but because it went international, they paid for shipping, which was a 
bonus. I love that. Yes. Oh, mine's going to be hard to pronounce. Um, the book that we sold, The Great Gatsby, went to Beijing. And guess what? I forgot to put GSP shipping on it. So I was a little panicked to ship a $240 book to China. And, um, and the other thing is, we took off to Lake Tahoe because they hadn't paid yet. And my dad, stepdad had to ship it because we left it in the trunk of our car in his driveway. And it all worked out good. That guy got that book really fast. He left feedback. So even without global shipping program, we shipped it. Did you do global shipping, Stephanie? And yours? No. You shipped yours. No, I pirate ship. So we both, yeah, we used pirate ship too. All right. Mine's one of those you're like, what? So this went to Sevig, Sweden, and it's in the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. <laughs> Vintage trucker hat sold it for $42 plus shipping to Sweden. I only had it listed for maybe two weeks. So it's the things you would never think would go internationally. Like a book I can kind of understand, but a hat of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline is going to some town in Sweden. But that's why we all offer international shipping because you never know when someone in Sweden says, you know what I need right now? An Alaska hat from about 30 years ago. And remember, we have military all over the world. Yeah, that's true. I and mean, it could be. Yeah. I, but I think it was very much a Swedish name. I think right. yeah. I think there was a lot of O's with lines through them and dashes and stuff, yeah. if I remember correctly. All right, now it's time for... Not that <laughs> Not like that. Now it's time for... There we go. <laughs> Our thrifty tip of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you out when you're in the thrift store or sourcing anywhere. And Steph's up first. Okay. This is my boyfriend, Eric. Some of you know him. And Hi, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really, really hoping. Last I heard, he's in traffic. So I'm hoping he's still in traffic and does not watch the <laughs> rerun because he's totally, this is totally going to blow my, what I do. So we like to thrift together. It's our date night and we've done it forever, even before we started selling on eBay. So he likes to go with me. So 90% of the time I'm thrifting, he's with me. I could thrift for hours. He starts to wear out after about 45 minutes. And he, Love as, as, <laughs> as Jason says often about Stacy, he gets that glass glazed over look in his eyes. It kind of looks so, like this. It goes from. Yes. And he, he starts hanging, you know, usually he's off on his own. But when he starts hanging out by my cart, I know. Okay. <laughs> so what Jason has always taught us is when you find something you want and you're not sure about it, you put it in the cart. And then maybe look it up later if you really need to know. So I maybe pile up my cart with things that I know I'm not going to want. Just so that 45 minutes into our thrifting time when he starts getting bored, first I give him things to start looking up. And then when he's done with that, I said, no, we don't want it. Go take it back. So I give him things, usually one by one, and have him take them back through the whole store. Oh, no. <laughs> he's, he's driving. He better not be texting. There's a lot of traffic. Just, I'm so busted now. There goes my plan. But in the past, up until now, it has gained me usually an extra 20, 30 minutes thrifting while, while he's busy looking things yeah, up sure and taking things back that I knew from the beginning that I didn't really want. It was just my plan to keep him busy and give shirt. me more time grumpy yeah so, i love the yeah. clothing pick and i love the so tip did you say you put things in your cart you know you're not going to really get just to buy more time yes love exactly it. Love it. Hey, someone's do no i do i never do that oh no <laughs> all right so uh i was in palm springs last thursday giving a speech at a tiki event and my friend who runs the event who lives in palm springs goes to the same goodwill before he goes to the gym almost every day and every day he finds something good Usually tiki, a lot of times mid-century modern. After all, it is Palm Springs. So because he was busy throwing an event, I'm like, I'm going to go to his Goodwill. And we found nothing. But what have I always told you? When the new card of stuff comes out, go get it. Because look what was on the new cards. Two tiki mugs. What? Not one, but two. So here they are. There's a Stacy photo bombing in the background. Uh, so the one on the right is a fairly common one. There's this whole Asian contingent of uh, tiki mugs. The one on the left is a homemade mug from what's called the Duncan Mold from the 60s and 70s. And I love the homemade mugs, especially when they're personalized, because it was made in Christmas 76 from June. How sweet. So they were a dollar. They were a dollar each. But when you see that new car come out, whatever you're doing, go to it. It's the fresh stuff. You'll be the first one to see it. All right. Can I ask a question about that? Typically, 
Are the homemade more like a Sarah? But you do like to collect. Uh, homemades aren't Sarahs because there are a whole contingency of us tiki collectors who like them. Okay. But some are done really well. Like when we go home later, I'll show you some really good ones and the ones that look like your mask. Okay. I've got a tiki mug with lips that Mick Jagger would be uh, <laughs> impressed by. All right. <laughs> Now it's time for you have got to be shipping me. Little tips and tricks what to do and definitely what not to do when it comes to shipping. Okay. This is a simple one, and it's but it's and it's an oldie, but but a goodie. I don't think it's been mentioned recently. And hopefully there's some new people watching that didn't know this. But first I saw in the thrifting board the other day that people didn't know that you could order priority shipping boxes for free. So that's it's just go to the USPS site and order priority boxes and they'll ship them right to your house for completely free. But even better than that, and the link should be right right here in front of us. And we can add to the uh, bottom of it. We'll add it to the show notes so later. Yeah. That you can go to this link and order the priority boxes that have the eBay branding. And I'd say that's helping eBay, but it's helping me because that's I'm promoting myself when I ship a box that says eBay on it. I did the graphic for Stephanie, and I could not find this. It took me a while to even find it. Yeah, that's it's why a little I, hidden. That's why yeah, I put yeah. the whole link there for you. And when you click on that USPS flat rate, it takes you to the second picture there. And then you just click. I ordered them all because all I had to do was it's click. So, and my so address easy. popped up because I was signed into eBay. And Same. boom, uh, I have all these you, boxes coming down. Can you find that link real quick so you can throw it in the chat? And you do it's have, right there on the graphic. Can you find it so you can throw it in the chat so they can click it? Oh. I'll, I'll try. I could, I'll send it to you. <laughs> you do have to be an eBay seller and signed up with eBay in order to order these boxes. Yeah. Cool. All right. So here's my uh, shipping tip. This is a what not to do, but it's not a, what I didn't do. It's what one of the sellers did. I bought a CD on eBay the other day, and it was free shipping. So that's great. Free first class shipping. And you always, 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 uh, you know, let's say something huge, should have the option of priority. And a CD fits so nicely into a uh, flat rate regular envelope, which ships for $6.75. So when I saw his expedited shipping was $13, that's crazy. Now, this mug would cost about $13 to ship, but a CD surely wouldn't. A CD would cost, this would cost $6.75. So have that option and you can pad it a little bit to make a buck or two, but don't double the price. Double the price makes you look either uneducated or just a jerk. All right. So, uh, so I see um, Nellie said she tried to get the eBay brand, but just ended up with regular priority. So the question of Nellie I would have to her is, did you order it from eBay that that site that we're pulling up right now? Uh, because you have to get it specifically from there to get the eBay brand. Yeah, yeah. So have two options, but make sure your option is priced in the normal range. If they would have said nine bucks, I wouldn't care. 13, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. All right. Now it's time for eBay tip of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you out when you're selling online. Today. Okay. I never claim to be the sharpest. So <laughs> <That's> we, <how laughs> <it starts. laughs> we had a return. And I wanted to know if it came broke, how did I ship it? Because I remember packing it and I... I probably spent an hour going through my eBay trying to figure out how did I ship that item because it had been about a month, I think. It had been a little while. So anyway, I went and looked everywhere and I could not find my shipping label for that because I could only go back 30 days. But aha, I discovered last night that you can change the um, the date. So the, the one arrow on the left, you know, you're in Seller Hub, you go down to, I mean, you're on your orders, ship, click on shipping labels. And then you can change the last seven days or go back to 90 days. And it will, it's kind of hard to see because I blocked out a lot of stuff. It will show the cost, the date, and it has the, um, the transaction number and the tracking number. All that information is there and how I shipped it. So had I known that, it would have saved me a whole lot of time. So if you ever need to know, hey, how did I ship that item? It turns out that it wasn't our item that was broke anyway, because we we're so fantastic shippers. <laughs> <laughs> and she was very honest. She contacted us right away and sent us a pic because we knew we always ship with newspaper and the picture had newspaper. And so we, you know, that was that all worked out good. But it was nice. I like to be able to know I can go back a ways and find out exactly what shipping class did I ship that. So if you ever need that information, here's how to do it. All right, so I bought a pair of shorts with elastic in them on eBay the other day. And let's see if I still um, – so my tip is if you sell anything with elastic, you must do the stretch test before you list them. 
Let's see if you can hear this. This means, yeah, this means the elastic is shot. Can you guys hear that? Could you hear that? Well, I know you can. You're sitting right here, you goober. Can you guys hear the, that's the elastic being shot. So if you're going to sell anything with elastic, you got to give it the pull test first. The customer shouldn't get it and find out they're they're just shot. So you should do that before you even buy it. When I'm drifting it, I Yeah. And I'm very bummed. I'm very, very bummed because I wanted those shorts to be mad. So always give Elastic the pull test. Uh, we got the link for the yeah. test. How did, did you send it to you? Yeah. It's in the chat. I, I put it in the chat if you want to do the show notes. Yeah, we'll put it, we'll put it at, the bottom, uh, at, the, at the bottom after we're done. Uh, I forget what, what sound effect. Maybe? How about... How about... <laughs> oh, this one. There we go. Yeah. Jeans with Joy's good job award of the week. Get 17 sound effects. All right. <laughs> so each week we're profiling somebody in uh, the thrifting board who really has paid attention to what Joy has taught, what we have talked about, and made money in denim. Because like CDs and cassettes, denim is everywhere. Uh, and so this is Shauna. Shauna uh, li was listening to Thrifty Business and found a pair of jeans that we had been talking about, uh, new with tags at the thrift store. And I often find uh, new with tag stuff uh, because I live in a city where people move in and out all the time. So when I go home and thrift with my ma, there ain't new with tag stuff in Cleveland. But here, there's new with tag stuff all day long. And so yeah, jeans will sell new or used. But man, when you find them new on the racks, go get them. So good job, Shauna, on listening to what Joy teaches. Good job, Shauna, listening to what we talk about on Thrifty Business. And then put it into action. Because you can learn all day, but if you don't put it into action, we're good to do you. So i uh, got a question. When So when you open the return, what reason will you choose? Oh, me. Uh, I, I know the, I, I kind of know the person who sold it, so I'm going to chat with them directly. So this will be a unique situation. So uh, it won't be the norm. It wasn't just a, a blind purchase, so to speak. All right, so, uh, oh, that's, that's a big graphic all of a sudden. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so the reason we're talking about military stuff today, because it is coming into Memorial Day weekend, and uh, Memorial Day is to remember and honor those that uh, we have lost who have fought for our freedoms. And that'd be so I asked in our two, the Thrifting Board and Secret Beach if anybody had any loved ones who had passed away in the, the war. So I got some pictures. Michael Mansour is a Navy SEAL. This is going to be hard. Who actually threw himself on a grenade to save the other seals. So he sacrificed his life for our, our country. Um, and then Chad, the, the other young man, he is childhood friends of a, of a member and her son did four tours and came back. This young man did not come back. And then up in the top corner is a, a father of one of our members and he was a POW. And I read the story of what this man went through to be protected and to get back in, into America. He was kept in Italy and I mean, it's just, wow. Um, so he was a POW and he died, I can't remember how much, you know, he lived his life, but because he was a POW, we want to remember. And then the other gentleman in the boat, he was a Marine who contacted, you know, picked up Agent Orange. And my stepdad also did that, you know, got the Agent Orange from being in Vietnam. This, this gentleman was able to live his life, but he got Parkinson's because of the Agent Orange and he was a Marine. Um, he passed away recently. And then, you know, I put a little graphic there just to remember all the the, love, the, the military troops who have lost their lives. And I, a lot of Memorial Day, we have par barbecues and parties, and that's why we're here in Vegas to celebrate with friends. But at the same time, we want to remember the, mem the reason for Memorial Day is to honor those who have sacrificed their lives to give us our freedoms. And so think about that. And I heard on the radio today, a young man, um, some radio station we listened to, he said, give a salute to the sky, to those who are looking down upon us and happy that they were able to provide, you know, they gave their lives, but for our freedom. So do please do think about that this weekend. Yeah, my dad was uh, in the service during Vietnam. Obviously he came home because he happened to luck out and be a carpenter and they sent him to Germany to build shit. So. Oh. So my dad lucked out. Not every dad did. So a uh, uh, head off and a salute to all those that have fought for our freedom. Thank you to their families. Yes, Thank yes. My dad, too, 25 years in the Air Force, but served in Vietnam. But luckily, he was, made it home. All right. It's going to be uh, a weird transition to go from that to, hey, Margaret's going to be on next week. <laughs> talking about jewelry, right? That we're talking about next week. I asked her to come on because I 
things like that. I want to learn how to sell jewelry. It's small. And how does a beginner? Uh, Margaret is the queen. She has thrifting, or no, I mean, um, Facebook groups for jewelry. She knows what she's talking about. So I just thought it would be nice to, how does somebody like me, who isn't really, a, I'm not a big jewelry fan. I don't really care about jewelry that much. How do I start? You know, with a little, what tools do we need to have? And I obviously, I can't go from beginning to advance really quickly, but what can I do and what can others do who want to start looking and sourcing for jewelry? So that'll be really good. Yep. So that'll be next Thursday, back to our uh, our new normalish time, eight o'clock, and a couple more things, and we'll get our guests in here. Uh, I've been doing some tiki mug unboxing videos there on this channel that you're watching right now. Even if you're not into tiki mug collecting, uh, the videos are short, three to four minutes. I would definitely watch them for two reasons: a, you will see cool mugs and mugs that are worth picking up if you happen to find them, but b, they're all shipping tips because I buy mugs from eBay, from Facebook, from the manufacturer, from the artist. Everyone ships differently, so it turned into how uh, how does people ship their breakables? So so far, so far I've had no breaks, <laughs> but man, some have shipped with garbage and newspapers, and others have shipped quite well, double boxes. So tune in, check those out. There's a whole bunch, and many more coming. Now, speaking of coming, if you're coming to Vegas for eBay Open, here's our schedule of events. Sunday, we start at the Double Down for an Ash Juice Party. That's kind of like a little welcome to Las Vegas. Yeah, Debbie's all excited. Uh, Monday, those of you in the Secret Beach, we have the Secret Beach Bash. Now, uh, we have a new band this year. Uh, Franks and Deans, our normal band, is on tour. And so, unfortunately, they're going to be in, like, Iowa when we're partying. But I got the second best thing in Vegas. It's called They're called the New Waves. And they're a surf band. Uh, uh, so think like the ventures, but they play all eighties new wave music surf style. So it's pretty awesome. We were hanging out with them the other night. So they're going to be a great band. What is happening over here? Is So for those of you in the secret beach, that'll be Monday. Now, Tuesday, there's a tiki party for anyone at Frankie's bring your best Aloha gear, Hawaiian shirt or a muumuu. And then, as I said, the thrift class on steroids, number three is going to be Friday. And uh, our, our lineup is pretty awesome. I just kind of starting to finalize it. And I'm finally getting the post up, which is right there. All right. So the way the third class on steroid works is we spend about two hours of classroom time. Then we go work in the bins. And then we go into the thrift store and add a few more instructors. So I'm going to be teaching about the forgotten forms of media, like cassettes, eight tracks, and reel to reels. Debbie's going to be teaching books. Joy's going to be teaching jeans. My mom's going to be teaching, I think, dresses and uh, lady clothes for the older lady. Uh, Craig Dawson is going to be teaching toys and the wall of baggies. And Stephanie's going to be teaching bread and butter type items, stuff that's easy to find that always sells. Not big dollar items, but stuff that we can always get, uh, we can always get sales from. And then when we get into the store, we're going to add a couple more uh, 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 tour guides, our instructors. So Rick, uh, Craig's husband, is going to help us in the store. And so what you get is you get like eight or nine instructors in one class. So as I said earlier, PayPal tricked me into taking away how I normally set this up. I finally figured it out too late last night. So uh, and then I had to get shots on my spine today. So fun, fun. So I will have that post up tomorrow. Uh, I know Joy gave away one during her uh, jeans webinar. And I will be giving away one or two leading up to eBay Open. Uh, but get get your once you see it tomorrow, we only have a certain amount of slots. Get your uh, space in the class. And if you happen to win one uh, down the road, then no biggie. I'll just refund you. But uh, make sure you sign up once you see the post. It'll be in the thrifting board. It'll be in the secret beach. It'll be in a couple of my other pages. So. And I always like to add that we do our best to find items, are, the items we find, you you buy. They're yours to buy because we want to earn your money back that you paid for the class if possible. So we work hard to find things um, for all of you that come to the class. Yeah, the cool thing is, so while the, uh, whoever goes first in teaching the classroom part, so we do 20 minute uh, uh, presentations, the others, so Steph and Deb and Joy, my mom will be in the store grabbing all the good stuff. You'll all get that. And then we'll all go to the store as a group and keep on working through the section so you can see live and in person how to scan in the media section and what to look for in the gene section. So even though we've kind of pulled the, the best stuff out already that you're all going to get, we're also going to take you back and work through a store. So it's a pretty badass class because you where else do you find a class where you get eight instructors, nine instructors? Crazy. And everyone that has specialties. And 
And if we're lucky, this one will help too. <laughs> she's gotten really good she she got, yes she finds such good stuff that i said you're part of the class this time you're teaching as long as i can do it in 40, the first 45 minutes yeah before before she glazes over yeah so that'll be up tomorrow so make sure to get signed up as soon as you see it there we go let me get our guest in here all right now it's time now it's time to talk military stuff so let me get our guest uh, da, 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 uh -huh. there we go and jump in and your birthday and your birthday there we go all right i've never been able to figure, figure a smoother way to do that well you're doing this so. <laughs> hey what's happening oh, i'm just sitting here <laughs> not my doorbell won't work what in the heck i know i know everything worked until now hold on technology just failed me Sure, blame on technology. <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> ah, te damn technology. Hey, it's time for our guest, Brandon. Hey, Brandon, how the heck are you? I'm all right. What is going on? So, uh, Brandon, where are you located? I'm in Morrison, Illinois. So you said when we were chatting before the show started, you said a podunk town. So here's what I meant to tell you. The road you live on, is it paved or dirt? It's not that. I live in an actual town, but... I actually live uh, like a block north of Highway 30, so. Okay, because I grew up on a road that was unpaved. <laughs> I grew up like a half a mile from a dirt road, so. All right, yeah, uh, unpaved and no speed limit. How many stoplights in your town? Uh, we, you know, in the town itself, we had a good amount because we had a square and then, but out where I live in the country, yeah, dirt roads, cow farm at the end of the road. So people go, didn't you grow up in Cleveland? Like, yeah, but in the countryside. I grew up next to the Amish people. You got, you got Amish where you live? <laughs> uh they're further south okay so like i said before when when i first was told you're gonna be our guest and what we're gonna talk about i really expected like an old man with white hair and glasses and then i saw your picture i'm like this guy's kind of young to be into the military stuff and, and what i thought was unique about you is you were into it when you were really young because you know what most of us are into when we're in grade school we're not still into when we're, we're adults but you it never left you no, I just remember when I was in preschool and one of my teachers like went to Hawaii and I was Hi. interested in seeing the Pearl Harbor pictures. Cam, get back. <laughs> yeah, he's more social than I am. That's <laughs> <laughs> Honey, will you come get our son? <laughs> yeah, he's not shy. <laughs> What's well, he I'll have him on in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be entertaining. <laughs> we love so you were fascinated by uh, how old were you when you were like, oh, I'm going to look at, I'm going to check out this uh, Pearl Harbor place. I was like in first or second grade. I had to make a copy of a movie on it and everything. And uh, so how old are you now? I'm 33. Okay, you're, you're a young pup. Like how old do we feel now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stacy's old enough to be your mother. <laughs> So, so you were into it when you were a teen, uh, a kid, but then, but then it never stopped. I mean, all you know, we all change what we like and what we go through, and but you kept, you know, it, 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 it was ingrained in you. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what got me started, but yeah, I kept studying as I got older, and then eventually just started collecting. It was mainly focused around local stuff, the so locally ID stuff. You could research the history and that kind of stuff. So, so when you were in high school and you were looking up stuff. See, 33. Yeah, so you didn't really have the internet back then, right? Oh, it was starting to come, but not it too was, much. Oh, it was AOL and it was. <laughs> so, what were you doing? Like, uh, you went from, you know, uh, grade school to junior high to high school. So, in high school, what kind what was your involvement in like collecting it and learning the history and stuff? Well, I started then. Like, one of my teacher's uncle was killed in action. So, I kind of researched it and tried to figure out what I could on it and took some pictures and. Found out what I could for her, but I mean, it started off small because I mean, some of the stuff is really expensive. So it 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 started out small, and now I have it everywhere. So, so my but, house is full of tiggies. Is your house full of military stuff? Yeah, my house, my garage. <laughs> uh, my wife wants to know if you have a storage unit like I do. I don't have a storage unit. I 
I have a three car garage with two office spots that we don't park in. So <laughs> do you have a basement? I have a basement and that has stuff in it too. But damn you. Damn you, Midwesterners in your basement. That's the one thing I miss about living here. So yeah, just, honey, where are you? Yeah, you haven't had to buy another house like I have. So uh one of my admins lives uh in uh where she live? Indiana? Illinois? Yeah. Indiana. She wanna know what town you're from. I'm from in between Lanark and Milledgeville. All right, there you go, Angela. If that means anything to you. <laughs> All right, so uh, but let's put a little pause on that because you have a real job that we all are going to stand up and give you a round of applause for. What is your real job, sir? I work for the post office. I'm a city carrier. <laughs> Look, I, I I feel that we, I mean, we all owe a debt of gratitude to every postal employee, every one of us watching tonight, every one of us in the thrifting board and the Seeker Beach. And I feel you guys never get uh, a thank you enough. You get a lot of complaints, but you know I've always taught people like, look, I, I've seen people say I, I was going to sell online, but I saw these three horror stories about the post office. I'm like, all right, let's look at this from a numbers perspective. There are fifty-five thousand people in my group. If we all are shitty sellers and we sell one thing a day, that is fifty-five thousand transactions and three mistakes or three issues. I go, that doesn't even register. The post office does a great job. So thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> and have you had that job for a long time? Uh, eight to 10 years now. I think next week I'll be five years full time. So I was going to say, it's not like you're in prison. How long have you been there? Eight to 10. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, is it early morning shift or how, what's your. Uh... I start 7 30, I end at 3 30. So. Okay. You like those hours? Like those hours. <laughs> like those hours. <laughs> that is making me choke. You still have the whole night. <laughs> on eBay. So, Deb, how'd you find Brandon? Um, through asking people for pictures of loved ones that had died in the war, and if anybody sold or knew about military history, because it's not just about profiting from it, but we want to preserve our history too and find these things. And then Brandon finally posted something, and I messaged him. I said, "Please come on the I show." So it's I love to talk with someone who's passionate about what they do and you definitely are you've been you know learning and studying it most of your whole life so that's awesome there's lots of things yeah the, this, this, these items are out there in the paper yeah and I, I think it's about you know Brandon doing military stuff me doing Tiggy stuff it, it's it's about finding the place the item should be you know yeah. we may find it where we thrift but the real person who should have it lives somewhere else right you know and, and so when, when did you go from just collecting to like, I should sell some of this stuff? Oh, I don't know. At least five or six years ago, maybe even sooner than that, just because, well, it's an expensive hobby. And I, my focus is locally stuff, local to where I live and so and local where I've had life events. So sometimes you find stuff that's further away or some things that aren't ID'd at all. So they're, because there's like field gear collectors, metal collectors, people who collect stuff like I do. There's people who collect patches and unit histories. I mean, there's so many different kind of things. And there's a lot of things that go to other people's focus that aren't what I'm as interested in. And you run out of room. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> Books take a lot of room, too. What yeah. did you start on eBay to, for, to sell your military items? Or did you... Which came uh, first? Some of both, because I, I sell some on online forums. I have a couple antique booths too, and eBay reaches a lot of people. And you're talking about shipping overseas. There's a large collection network, like in Europe and Asia, just because, well, we've conflicts over there have affected their history and that. And so there's a lot of people overseas that collect also, not just here in the US, even though there's a lot in the United States also. All right, so now that you said that, when you first started a selling, were you right away offering worldwide shipping? Did you realize you should be doing that? Uh, I did ship some things overseas, yeah. So. And, uh, uh, oh, I was going to ask you, do you, is there a certain time frame that you collect? Like, is it Civil War? Is it World War II? Is it uh, Trojan War? <laughs> I don't quite go to the Trojan War, but I have stuff from the Civil War all the way to more current times. I mean... 
I have a lot of World War One, World War Two, and some Vietnam. And then I also have like the Civil War. You have the reunion organizations, and there's a big collector following for GAR, the Grand Army of the Republic, and other organizations like that where the veterans would get together afterwards. You know, it was probably like the predecessor to the VFW and American Legion, but it was based on Civil War veterans. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the stickiest question I've ever asked a guest ever because of what we're talking about. Look, in the thrifting board, I've always said any group I've ever run, if it's legal to own and legal to sell, whether I believe in it or not, or it crosses my lines, I'll help you sell it. <clears throat> it's not about what you know my beliefs, so to speak. So when it comes to things like uh, the Nazi flag, the Nazi uniform, the rebel flag, obviously. Do you deal on those things or do you leave those things behind? I have, actually I have quite a bit. And a lot of part of it is because our veterans brought lots of that stuff home. I mean, Absolutely. I have groups that, like I have a couple Japanese flags that are unit signed by the veterans. And then they like drew things on it and made designs on it. And I have others. And I mean, it's still part of the history because if it weren't for those things, we wouldn't have had the whole conflict in the first place. I mean, it's just making sure you go the fine line and don't take the ideology and take it for the historical purpose. Yes. I'm glad you said that because it's about the history of the item. Look, I'm married to a nice Jewish girl. And of <laughs> course, obviously, uh, her grandparents were over in uh, Russia and had some issues with uh, the Germans. And so, yeah, yeah I get it. I, I'm not glorifying it, but I, but it's a, it's a historical piece. And so if we're talking at it, from a historical standpoint, absolutely. We're talking at it from a, a racist gathering standpoint. No way. But yeah, you know. So where and where do you draw the line? So but, but, uh, yeah, I'm glad you said that from the historical standpoint. So uh, go ahead. Can you sell uh, Nazi items? Items that have the Nazi sign? Is, does eBay allow that? There is only certain, certain, <laughs> certain things. Like if they have the plastic on it, not usually. Like stamps, coins. That kind of things you can field gear you can as long as it because not a lot of things are marked but it if it doesn't have like the symbol on it usually it's okay but there's certain things like yeah so there's a lot of things you can't but there's a lot of things you can you just gotta know the line when it comes to that so are you saying we can reach out to you if we come up with we can reach out to you if we come up with some questions help i can try to help okay good to know do you have an item that you've kept for yourself that you're very favorite that you'll always hang on to? Oh, there's a lot of things. <laughs> uh, I'm hearing a whole house full. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have quite a few things. Like I have a group to a doctor who was at Dachau after he was liberated, which I, he was an American doctor with the third army when it got liberated, which that that's pretty interesting. I mean, I have medals to soldiers who didn't make it back. And, you know, researching the history on those. And I have lots of local stuff. I mean, I have pieces. I have some family pieces that I were given to me. Other family pieces I don't have that I'd like to find, like I've heard through the grapevine of my relatives. But, you know, 20, 30 years ago, so who knows what's happened to them. But there's a lot of things that I wouldn't get rid of. But it's hard to say, like, specifically one thing. Okay, so follow up to that one. What's the coolest thing you've sold? Oh, a tank. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wish. Uh, I sold, I've sold a few things. I mean, I've sold some metal groups that were pretty interesting that weren't local. I sold a group to a guy who's a doctor from Nebraska who was the president, I believe, of the Nebraska Board of Surgeons or something like that after the war, but he served in Italy during World War II. I'm just trying to think. Uh, well, that kind of ties to our question we got from the chat. Have you ever met any of the owners of the stuff you sold? Most of the owners I met, if I got anything. Like when I was in high school, I interviewed some World War II veterans and did some oral interviews and that kind of stuff, but I didn't get much of that. A lot of it, I, I, I did meet one owner, and I bought his stuff at the estate sale, but I kept that. I didn't actually sell it. So most of the owners I meet are local, so they end up going in my collection. So not many things that are I've met haven't been sold, but if you get what I'm saying. Oh yeah. 
All right, so uh, you have a spouse, right? Yeah. Does she enjoy the collection too? Uh, I think it's a good thing that she loves me because <laughs> <laughs> that's the best answer ever, right there. <laughs> so I love that. All right, so two. You have two antique bo uh, antique uh, booths and antique. Yeah, bar? I have two antique booths. I have. Yeah. And how long have you had those? One I've had three to five years. The other one, I've had them probably around five years or somewhere in there. And I, so. and that work, I take it it works well for you if you've had them for five years. Yeah. And it how would do too bad? You put into like keeping it stocked and cleaned and straight and everything. <laughs> oh, I have quite a bit in, so sometimes I have to go in and rearrange because well, people leave stuff laying there and and then putting new stuff in and yeah, it can be a little bit of work. So let's see, you're an eBay seller. You have two booths, Antique Mall. You have a regular nine-to-fiver. You have at least one child. One, almost two. All right. Oh, yay! <laughs> so do you ever have any just free time to do nothing? Uh, when I keep myself way too busy, yeah, I've got myself I, going in 20 different directions. I, I know the feeling. <laughs> All right, so we got to quick questions. Um, so Angela, my admin, who kind of lives near you-ish, so do you prefer one era over the other? I think we talked about that, but is there what is your what's your favorite? Like if, if you're if we're gonna go to a war collection, what's your favorite? Probably between the Civil War and World War II, and I also like World War One, but it's hard to say exactly. <laughs> all, of all of them. <laughs> where where does the Korean conflict fall into your <laughs> line of what would you like? I I have stuff from that too. I mean <laughs> that's important because it's not as remembered, and I mean it wasn't as long, but I do have stuff from that, too. Wow. Uh, Tina, who's in the chat, who's a good friend of ours, said, my oldest daughter's father was a POW in Vietnam at the Hanoi Hilton for seven years. Wow. Yeah. I wouldn't want to imagine what they went through. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Somebody. I was just going to say, when you're touching an item, you find the goosebumps. Like, this, this is not – I mean, obviously, there's reproductions out there, but when you know you've got the legit thing – a helmet or gun or whatever. Do you just get goosebumps? Like this is the real thing. People touch this. These soldiers, these people touch this. Their prints are on here. Does that just like I just want to make you cry almost? You know, at times. It 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 gives. I don't know how to explain it. It makes you want to try to find the history, and it does give you a feeling because you're holding something that has been there and seen it. I mean, I don't know exactly the word to use, but I definitely get excited. So not, I don't know if excited is the right word, but seeing a historical piece, because you don't see them every day. I mean, I'm looking for them all the time, so it isn't like I'm not finding them, but I do. you do get a feeling. So uh, Susan wants to know, if you're selling patches for all the brands, mm -hmm. do you bundle them or do you sell them individually? It depends. Some patches are worth way more than others. And then in going to patches, there's so many different styles and eras. And some of them, it is better to sell them as blue out lots because it's they're not worth as much. And then some patches are worth multiple hundreds of dollars, if not thousands. Wow. And it's one of those things that I know enough, and that, but I don't know everything. I mean. Is that your question? Huh? That your question? All right. So my wife has a question for you. All right. Uh, do you keep the collection separate? So, like, is there a WW2 room in your house and a Civil War room, or is it all kind of intertwined? It's kind of intertwined. Someday, if I ever can find enough time, I always wanted to be a museum. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but as growing up, I mean, there's a guy who was local who had the museum, and that kind of inspired me, too, because he had it all displayed and stuff. But right now, with my room, I just – some of it's in storage, and I have a few pieces on display and stuff in my house. Yeah, I say my Tiki collection is kind of all over the house, but if you know it and you look, you'll see, oh, those all go together in this little section, and those all go together and that little yeah. section. But there's so much that, yeah, it just gets all mixed in. Yeah, something. Oh, okay. I was going to ask, do you think you'll teach your kids? The love. I mean, it's when we have a love of something like books, we teach our kids, obviously. So do you plan on like teaching your kids? I'd like to. I mean, it'd be something to connect over. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's up to them. I mean, it's not something you want to force on them, but so be it. If they do enjoy it, it'd be 
something to bond over too. So. So do you dress your? You, a son, you dress them up as a soldier for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done that yet. This year he was a mailman, so. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Oh, that's awesome. Eddie, All right, we got two more questions. Really your, uh, speaking of, He's there he is. Very important. <laughs> like, Daddy, I want to be a mailman. Uh, uh, is there? What's the best way to authenticate military items? Is there a service? I mean, you're kind of, you've known for a lot of years, so you're good at it. But if, if someone was just to find something, where's a place to find out if it's, you know, old or kind of a repop? Uh, there's forums online there's lots of reference books but i mean like i was telling you before like there, like metals for instance there's so many different brooches to different eras that it's so like i could say reference books sometimes if you search the internet you can find things but it isn't it does take quite a bit of knowledge but i mean like world war ii victory medals you can have ones with a World War II era crimp. Then they have restrikes that are more recent. And so there's a lot of things to look. I mean, it's hard to explain in just a short instance like this, but there are reference books, there are forums, and there are websites on the internet that like some collectors have done or stuff like that. Uh -huh. And I mean, like I've said, there, there's so many wide varieties of collectors who collect different aspects of military. That's hard to go in many diff different directions. It would seem like there's probably a, a lot of Facebook groups that people could get into. Yeah, there are a lot of Facebook groups too. And I would think too, do you sell through those Facebook groups? Because I would think if you're in a group and you allow, hey, what is this? And somebody would probably say, I want to buy that from you. Uh, so I, I'm on some of them. I haven't done much. I've bought off some of them. Okay. But people do post things and people will say, I'd like to buy it or they offer to buy it i mean some people post not for sale or stuff like that but oh. that is one venue so i mean there's lots of venues but yeah okay. we had a question from the chat uh uh marianne has a russian army soldier's hat with a bunch of pins should she sell the pins separately or leave them on the hat uh, like are the it depends if the pins are part of the hat if you take the pin off the hat, it will kill the value if it's actual part of the hat. Without seeing, it's hard to say for sure. So Marianne, mm -hmm. you, you know, Marianne, post a picture later tonight or tomorrow in the in the thrifting board, and uh, Brandon's in there, and you know, he can say because uh, yeah, that's kind of thing we're like. Kinda I'm not as good with Russian stuff, but most of the time, it helps. I mean, you don't want to take the officer emblem off or the enlisted man emblem because. I mean, that does add value. You can still sell them separately because people are looking for them to replace on hats, but there's many different options when you do it. Cool. Yeah, Marianne said she'll post it in the group so we all can check it, take a look at it. All right, so right at the end here, let's uh, let's talk about your scores and your duds. So uh, Legion of Merit, Legionnaire Medal. Where where'd you find something like this? I probably bought that one on eBay. And I'm guessing you bought it for a lot less than you sold it for, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yeah. So do people mislabel stuff that you find pretty easily? Oh, and a lot of the time I go through military data unknown and look for things that stick out to me and I can find some things that way. And sometimes there are military dealers on there that probably buy large collections. So they try to move inventory and they do auctions. So I bid sometimes that way and get it. And sometimes you find things that people don't know what they are or the true value and put buy it now is, or, you know, you get my auction for less. So stuff like that. I mean, I do buy a few things off eBay. I do go to a lot of state sales too. Holy crap. Where'd you find this uh, WW2 uh, uniform? <laughs> I probably bought that one on eBay too. It's a larger size. So that's a, that's a big thing I look for is jackets that are larger sizes. Cause they always do well because they're harder to find. He says it's a larger size. I'm like a, a 50 sex extra wide across my chest. I well, like for that time. <laughs> I think I've seen one like one size 46, 48, or 50, one or two. You don't find those sizes very often. No. People were lower back then. Yeah. People were not built like me back then. They didn't eat like we 
No, not everything. <laughs> See, you did sell a tank. See, I told you you sold a tank. Yeah, GI Joe tank. <laughs> so where'd you find this tank at? I bought it in an antique booth from one of the people I know for thirty-five dollars. Some of them go for less, but I'd seen some go for that. So it took me about a year, but I got it. That is awesome. And last but not least for your scores. Wow. What? <laughs> this plastic model kit sold for $230. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It was you. Yeah. What, where'd you find that at? I bought a collection of model kits at, from a state sale, and that was one of them. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. That's another aspect. There's a lot of model military model kit builders out there too. So, but not everything is uh, scores. This is the most disheveled Batman and Robin <laughs> I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, I took a lot less on that one. I bought it in an auction. I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure it was that much or more. And and then I, it accidentally got damaged. So. They're barefoot. They're fighting crime in their bare feet. And one's missing its foot because it got broke off. So it was loose. In their bare feet, one footed. <laughs> Robin stole somebody's clothes. <laughs> the, you know, we were just at a three day rave here in Vegas called EDC. I got to imagine this is what a lot of the kids look like Monday morning. Just dragging <laughs> their ass through the hotel, clothes falling off. Anyone seen my foot? <laughs> Uh, EDC is the Electric Daisy Carnival. We raved till dawn. And then, uh, so this, uh, now I would think 30 bucks sounds like a good deal but a, for a sale, but. It was a good, it, I got a good price for it. It was more of that when I bought it, the eBay auction showed a picture with it with a pickaxe, but said it wasn't included. So then I got it and realized the pickaxe wasn't included. So, uh -huh. so at that point, it, and I never did anything about it. And so at that point, it was like, I was just trying to get close to what I got. I think I lost like five bucks on it, but. But hey, losing five bucks is better than losing 30. So yeah, I mean, yeah, you, always exactly. have to, you know, hedge your bets. And you learned a lesson. <laughs> yeah. In the title. Don't believe the, the lion eBay sellers. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, two last questions. Um, Robert says, being a mail carrier, do you ever come across old letters from soldiers? Uh, I've never found any old ones. I have a bunch, but I, I, you've, I've never found any carrying metal. I've delivered stuff like trunks full from soldiers who are overseas sending stuff home to their families. Well, that's cool. So and then lastly, uh, uh, my admin, Angela, who lives near you says, we need to see this child. Yes. Everyone Ooh. wants to see your son. Hey, so. Camden, come here. They want to see you. I've only seen his hand so far, so. Oh, I didn't say hand. Oh, we saw hi. There. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Uh, I say hi. 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 What's happening, buddy? How old yeah. Are you? Yeah. Camden. He'll talk your head off. Well, how old are you, Camden? You're, you're four. Three? Yeah, four. Oh. All right. Yeah. Are you a uh, <laughs> YouTuber? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, my wife and I don't have kids. We're not much for kids, but you got a cute kid. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Well done. Good, yeah. good genes. <laughs> so, um, the, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Like one of the things I'd said earlier is there's a lot of different things to go from. I mean, if anybody has questions, I mean, there is so many different ways and manufacturer types and all that. It's a hard subject just to cover in a short while with so many different things. Remember that. Oh. So uh, I was going to end, but uh, I remember I had one little kind of military-ish thing no. in, in my storage <laughs> unit. And so, although not old, old, am I lined up? Am I good? Yeah, uh, sure. Am, I, am I on the screen? Yes. yes, you're on the screen. Okay. There you are. Oh, but, yeah, okay. So just a little more, no, like the whole thing. Yeah. Move it towards me. You're, you're yeah, rotating. You go. There just you go. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's yes. showing it. So, uh, would this be something you would kind of grab? Would, 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 would this catch your eye at a, a, you know, at a? I'd look at it. I mean, I don't know if I'd get it or not, but it. I, I would look at. It. I've seen stuff like that at sales. I have a couple in my garage, probably somewhere, piece like that, that are commemorating battles. So my my uncle who passed away was huge, and he loved 
uh, the Civil War and researching it and visiting all the sites and stuff. And so when he passed, I got some of his stuff. And this is one of the things that's been sitting in my storage unit. I'm like, oh, we're talking about military stuff tonight. So they bust out my big ass Civil War. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to get that up and listed soon. Uh, so uh, let me start by thanking you, Brandon. And uh, no problem. Hey, Brandon. Say hi, buddy. <laughs> Look at all that hair, jerk. <laughs> so I want to thank you for a couple things. I want to thank you for being a guest on the show, and absolutely thank you for being uh, part of the postal system and, and, and making sure all our packages uh, get to and fro. So I want, to, I want to thank you for that. You're welcome. And I want to thank uh, Debbie for coming on down and being uh, being my producer and my frequent co-host, and Steph for being my co-host tonight. Thank you for oh, absolutely. <laughs> And the hidden uh, yeah. <laughs> stays for keeping track of all the questions in the chat. So I want everyone to have a wonderful holiday week and remember those that uh, gave their lives for our freedoms. And uh, if you have someone who served uh, uh, and they're still with us, make sure to thank them. And uh, that's it. So we'll be back next Thursday. I heard there was a, uh, a typo in the graphic, young lady. This was at one thirty. Yeah. So no, Mark, Mark and Collier will be on next Thursday, 8 o'clock East Coast, 5 o'clock West Coast. And we'll be talking jewelry. Oh, uh, Mom and I haven't figured out the time, but we're going to probably do a show on Monday because we're having a party on Sunday. So uh, stay tuned. Mom is hitting the big Hartville flea market this weekend, and we're going to be talking about shopping at flea markets, kind of the tips and tricks to find the coolest stuff, how to dig up the cool military stuff, the tiki mugs and stuff. Yes, Steph? We forgot to mention the cruise. Oh, oh. Uh, find that real quick. yeah, so we are doing a secret beach cruise, but we had a few rooms uh, left. And so we opened up the 13 board and a couple of 13 board members have already signed up. Yay. And we just got word today from our travel agent that um, they've extended the discount uh, time and a couple more rooms for us. Whoa. So, yes. yeah, so Bye. if you. So if you want to uh, sail the the seven seas or the Pacific, yeah. and you, <laughs> and you want to uh, uh, do some uh, learning and just have fun with a big group, there's probably about uh, forty of us right now. Let me see if I can find this post really quick. Yeah, here it is. All right, cool. So uh, we are doing the Mexican Riviera, uh, November second through 9th. And um, we did a five-day cruise last year. We're doing a seven-day this year. The five-day was fun. So much fun. But the seven-day is going to be better because we have a little bit more time of, of screwing around. And part of cruising is screwing around, having fun. And what's nice, uh, and then everyone here at this uh, here has been on it. And what's nice when you go with a group, no matter where you go, even when you don't have planned activities, you go to the fun bar. Oh, look. There's three people from the group. You go to the disco. Hey, here's 10 of us. You go play on the water slide. Hey, there's two of us. So there's always people around, and we're hitting some great cities. We're hitting Mazatlan, Puerto Vallarta, and Cabo San Lucas, and I plan on being drunk on tequila twice at Cabo Wabo that day because we're there all day long. So, But we breakfast are going to – Breakfast and dinner. Breakfast and dinner, yes. We'll start and we'll end at Cabo Wabo. So if you might want to join us on the high seas for some uh, eBay learning and some fun – uh, there is a post in both the Secret Beach and the Thrifting Board. You do not have to be a Secret Beach member, uh, but if you are a Secret Beach member, we will have a specific class just for you guys. Uh, but if anyone wants any more information than what's here, hit me or Stephanie up, and we'll be happy to help you. That's how I met Stephanie and Eric. Yes. We were in line to check into our hotel for the cruise, and he saw my eBay suitcase. He goes, you're selling eBay? I go, yeah, they live in Lakewood, Washington, and we're from. We lived in Tacoma, Washington for years, so now we're – for BFFs, <laughs> so come and join us. It was, it was our first cruise. That was our last time. Was our first cruise. This time we got the room with the door open. I was sleeping the balcony. The, door the balcony. <laughs> the door. She got the door. <laughs> the room with the door. She got the room. Yeah, some room come the door. We're just in a hallway. In the and window. So we're gonna sleep with the door open. I hope no. This, I think Stacy Stacy said seagulls might fly in. You never know. So I gotta find a, a screen door. <laughs> All right, Brandon, if, uh, if you ever make your way out to Vegas, let me know. I'll be happy to uh, All right. grab a drink or dinner with you. And uh, if I ever get to Podunk, uh, uh, middle of the <laughs> I'll, I'll look you up. But uh, I'll be out there to do some uh, eBay classes between Ohio, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. So I got some stuff coming up. So if you can come join us in anything, we'd love to have you. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a good evening and a great weekend. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. 
And like I said, mom and I will be live on Monday at some time. So if you're done cooking out, later. That, yeah, it'll be definitely later in the day. <laughs> so if you've had enough of family and friends, tell them to split. I have to go watch YouTube, all right? So with that, we are out of here. We're going to Frankie. So see you later. Bye, everybody. Bye.